Back at the Daytona International Speedway, and we are building toward a dramatic finish. President Ronald Reagan looking on alongside Bill Grant Jr., whose family built this racetrack. And out on the course, it is Richard Petty in car 43, Gail Young in car 28. Now as they try to position themselves for the last lap first of the finish, when they cross the yellow line on the front straight here, there will be three laps remaining in the race. They're now on lap 150, and a car is spun out. Doug Hebron's car is spun out in turn one. So now the yellow caution flag may be coming out. Indeed, as I look just below us, the yellow caution flag is going to come out. This will, in all intents and purposes, perhaps be the last lap of the race. The rule requires them to solidify under the caution at the beginning of the next lap. <laughs> it's an incredible situation now. Are they going to race to the line? This is an interesting rule situation, Jim. You are allowed to race to the line once the yellow has come out. Gail Yarbrough gives that Richard Petty is counterattacking. This may be the race that we're looking at here as they sweep up into traffic. A highly dangerous situation. Coming, coming down the front straight. Here they are, stand there, but come across the yellow line. Just about together, but Petty has the lead. By the nose of the car, Richard Petty was just in front of Gail Yarbrough as they came across the line. Now they have completed 158 laps. There are two laps to go, and in all likelihood, we would have to guess this race is going to end under a caution and Petty's going to win. Incredible, yes, and as you know, you are allowed, I just restate this, to race to the yellow, to the uh, finish line under the yellow flag, and that's what we saw. We saw Yarbrough realized the predicament that he was in, that he had to get by. Here's the petty picker. You see what they think has happened. Well, they believe, and probably safely so, that the race has ended, that there will be no more racing under a green flag. And as the caution stays out for these last two laps, Richard Petty will simply hold on to first place. Doug Hebron's car number 01 is nestled just on the infield inside of turn one. It's going to take some time to move it. And in all likelihood, there will be no more racing. So Petty will come by now with one lap to go. And behind Petty, Gail Yarborough is turning off and heading towards pit road. Hard to imagine what is going to Gail's mind. He sacrificed second place. And he makes a pit stop here, but Petty has the lead with one lap to go. Gail coming into the pit. Petty still out on the racetrack, piling up an enormous advantage now. What could be the reason? No, Gail goes right through the pit and back out. I'm trying to think if there's any remaining element of strategy that could have dictated that move. I can't think of it. Hard to imagine exactly what Cale Yarbrough was thinking at that point, unless he just simply decided in disgust that the race was over. But he would have given away other positions. We have Terry Labonte running back there. Uh, so I don't know. The scoreboard has been confused for the moment. Now it shows lap 159 completed. So Richard Petty may in fact get a checkered flag as he comes down the front straight the next time. We're following Petty now on your screen as his car at the front of the pack goes through turn three. They have slowed down for the yellow caution flag. Now just to take a look back at exactly what happened. The caution flag came out as they went down the back stretch. Cale Yarborough moved to the front of the pack ahead of Richard Petty. They were racing to the yellow line. The caution actually begins on the next completed lap after the crash with the caution flag comes out. So, Richard Petty, by passing Cale Yarbrough coming out of turn four on the front straight and beating him to the yellow line by the margin of the nose of his car, won the race. As they come down this time, you are going to see a checkered flag for car number 43. Richard Petty has won the 200th race. To win uh, July the 4th, the president has never been a president to a racetrack before as far as watching a Winston Cup series. And, you know, from that standpoint, it, it just had to be the, the best thing going for us that, that could have been. And, and it couldn't have come in a better place because of Daytona. The guest of honor, President Ronald Reagan, and the honored man of the day who has won his 200th Grand National Star Car Race, Richard Petty. Mr. President, it's great to have you here. A member of your staff intimated to me yesterday that although you are interested in the fortunes of all race drivers, you might be excited to see this occasion, Richard Petty winning his 200th. It's quite a day. Isn't it? Well, it certainly is. I understand that no one in the whole history of racing has ever done that. It was a, a one 200 races. I knew a uh, four or five laps on the radio. How'd you think the race call went? Not very good. I'm glad that when I was a sports announcer, it was mainly baseball and football and a few things like uh, swimming and that sort of thing because uh, I was having an awful lot of laps after I got here when I was trying to figure out um, uh, who was where. <laughs> I can tell you myself that it can be confusing and it was 
a bit of a confusing finish. I wonder, Richard, when you noticed that Heveron had left the track, the caution flag was going to come out, and you had, in effect, a one-lap race to the flag for the, for the victory. Well, just, just as it went across the start-finish line, you know, you're, you're going in one direction, then when you turn at the start-finish line, you look down into the first and second corner just as far as you can see. And I've seen the car sitting on the, the infield, and when I did, then I just hit it to the floor and just waited for Kale to make his move, and when he did, then he just went in the corner a little bit too hard up there, and his car didn't stick, and I was able to cut back beside of him, and then we kind of touched a couple times, and I beat him to the line. You weren't worried when he went past you? What? You weren't worried when he went past you there on the back yeah, I was worried. I was sitting there for the last 40 laps wondering what he was going to do. I know what he was going to do and where he was going to do it, but I didn't know how I was going to overcome it. But what happened when, uh, when that, the boy spun, then everything was, was strictly reflex. He had to do something, and I had to do something. The figuring that both of us done never came to be. So uh, it was an act and a react. So he acted and I reacted. You've been around this sport so long that you may not get terribly excited at uh, the prospect of winning a race, but was there a little extra thrill in winning, knowing that the number one fan was here today? Well, definitely. Uh, you know, 200 is, is very, very important. But uh, under the circumstances, uh, with all the presidents that's ever been in the United States, this is the first one that's ever showed up at a racetrack. So everybody's got to go from that from racing standpoint. And I wanted to be the one that was able to, to welcome him to Grand National Racing. Richard, congratulations to you on this terrific occasion. Mr. President, thanks for being with us. Well, pleased to be here, and it's been a very exciting day, and uh, I join in congratulations. Uh, I even have a conflict of interest here because uh, he's um, doing some yeoman service uh, in a political sense. <laughs>